Hi everyone, my name is Patrick Anderson and I know a lot of you have been using Zoom lately. So I thought I would make a video going over some of the features, including the all important how to use a virtual background. I know everyone's busy, so I'm gonna go ahead and put in my headset, set up my screen recorders and jump right into it. Okay, so first things first, let's get a new meeting set up so this is your default screen when you log in and open the app. So it's quick and easy, just hit new meeting. Now it's started with my webcam, which is actually looking very close with me being close to my laptop. I'm going to join with computer audio. You can use a phone, but we won't go over that part right now. And now my meeting has started. So the way to get other people invited, click on the invite button, copy your URL. And what I'm gonna do is go over to my preferred messaging app, which is Hangouts for me. And send it to myself, my other account. And hit enter. And you can do that via text message, email, however you want to share it, that works. And there it is popping up on my screen. So I'll just hit open link. We'll open with Zoom. Just preparing the meeting. And let me make sure everything's muted. Okay, so I muted my sound. And that's that's just because I'm recording here. If I have all the sound going, then it becomes very distorted. But that's it. So you can share that URL with as many people as you want, and they can just click on it and join. Of course, they have to have the Zoom app already installed. If they don't, it will prompt them to install it, like I'm sure you got, like the first time you got a Zoom meeting. The first thing that a lot of people ask about is how do you change the view while you're in a call. Very easy to do on the computer, just click on speaker view or gallery view. And the more people that join, the more uh, people that will show up here, obviously. To do it on your phone, you just have to swipe and then you can get to the gallery view and then swipe back to get back to the, the speaker view. Now I'm going to go ahead and jump to one of the fun features because a lot of people ask about this. That's the virtual background. So like when you're in a meeting, you're having a lot of fun and it may not be a meeting. It may be a virtual party. Just click on the up arrow that's right next to stop video. And you'll see a menu option that says choose virtual background. Just click on that. By default, there, there should be some that are preloaded. So I could choose like the Golden Gate Bridge. And now you can see I'm in front of the Golden Gate Bridge and it's, it's not perfect. And if there's two people in your camera view, it has a lot of uh, issues trying to determine how to replace the background properly. But with one person, it works pretty well. But if you want, you can actually choose your own image or video. So I'll start with the image and I have a few loaded up here. Let's see, let's go to the beach in Cape Town. And there we go. So there I am. That's all there is to it. Now there's not many restrictions on what type of image that you can use, uh, the dimensions or anything like that. Uh, video is a little bit more specific. It says it can support up to 1920 by 1080, but I think because I'm broadcasting at 720p, that's the limit here for my video edition. And I have one video that I converted over and that's it. Just click on it. It's the exact right format. And then you can see I can move around and it's, it's all good. That's actually a lot of fun, especially if you're doing like virtual video parties, like we've been doing with the coronavirus stay at home order. It makes it a little bit more interesting to have some type of fun background. Um, you can see like my headset cord, has disappeared, it's not perfect, and there's some issues around with my hair. But overall, it's pretty, pretty cool and pretty fun.
Now, depending on what version of the software you have in your phone, um, you can do the virtual background on your phone as well. I do not believe on Android phones it's supported at this time, but on iPhone it is. You have to give that a try. I believe it's just tap on your video image and then you can do the same thing there. So as I joined this meeting, you'd see I muted myself to unmute. You can just click on the unmute. We'll do that back and forth. And the same thing with the video. Now, a lot of people might wonder why you want to stop the video in normal situations. If you're going to step away from the computer, I always recommend stopping the video. You never know what's going to happen um, while you're gone. But another great reason to stop the video is it helps save on bandwidth. So if you're in an actual meeting where one person is presenting and everybody else is just sort of listening, it's best just to have everybody stop video. And you can request that they stop video. If you're the meeting manager, you can mute everybody or unmute everybody. You can also give people the, uh, the option to mute themselves. And another really key feature is that you can mute participants on entry. And what that does is like as soon as someone joins, it automatically mutes their audio. Um, and then you can, you know, give them the information on how to unmute themselves. But it just, you know, as your meetings get bigger, it makes for a nice, more quiet environment. And with that same idea, that's why I'm wearing a headset. So get in the habit of when you're on a Zoom meeting, wearing a headset. And the reason for that is, is when you're using just your computer, webcam, and microphone, it's like using a speaker phone. So you get like a lot of feedback. It picks up a lot more of your surrounding sound. And of course, if that's happening with eight, 10 or 30 people, however many people are in your call, it can get very noisy. It just does a way better audio experience if you have a headset and it doesn't have to be anything fancy. As I mentioned in one of my other videos, this is a, a phone headset that I got for free probably like four or five years ago and works just fine for doing video calls. So when you're in a call or a meeting, Another fun thing to be able to do is to have a chat going on. And it's very quick and easy to click on chat and it comes up here on the, the side. And you can send a message to everyone. And another thing you can do is like, if you want to send it to just one of the participants, click the down arrow and then it'll list all the participants and you can send it to like one person. On your phone to access the chat, click on yourself, click on participants, click on chats, and then there you see the chat. And the same thing, like you have the drop down menu, select who you want a message to, or you can just go and say hi back, and it shows up everywhere. So that's a quick and easy way to chat. Something else that you might have noticed in Zoom meetings is the name that appears with the video image of the various participants. There is a way to change that quickly and easily. So you just click on your video, the dot, dot, dot in the menu, click rename. And I can say, it's me. And it changes to the name. To change the name on your phone, click on yourself, click on participants, find the person that's you, it says me right by it. Click on that and click rename. And it's the other me, and that changes everywhere. One other cool feature, of course, with Zoom, and you've probably have seen this at some point, is the ability to share a screen. So let me go over the options with that for you. If you click on share screen, it gives you screen one. I have actually a two monitor setup, so I have screen two. You have whiteboard, so you can actually draw and type you have an iPhone or iPad, you can connect that, or you can pick an actual individual screen that you want to share. My recommendation is like, if you have like a PowerPoint presentation, a slideshow or video or something like that, that would be the way to do it. You don't want to share your whole screen because like if you have a pop-up message or an email come in and it pops up on your screen, you're broadcasting that to everyone. So for example, I want to share my website. I'll click share. And now it's sharing that to everybody else. But let me show you what it looks like over here. And as I scroll on the desktop, it'll eventually scroll over here in my video. 
And when I'm done, I said I just hit stop. And now it's back to my face. To share on the phone is a little bit different. It lets me share like a photo or document from various uh, resources like Google Drive, Dropbox, or OneDrive. I can actually share my entire screen. But again, you got to be careful. Like if you get a text message while you're sharing, everybody's going to see it. And I got to set the permissions up. It's asking me, this is of course on Android. And there it is. Now my screen is being displayed on both. We do something like Twitter that I don't mind popping up. I can scroll. So it's really just broadcasting exactly what's on my screen to everyone in the meeting. And then to stop, there's a little arrow down at the bottom that I clicked on, hit stop share, hit stop share, and now it's back to my face again as well. That was it. There's more features and stuff that you can dig into with Zoom, but that is all of the basic stuff that'll get you going a pretty long way into having some fun and productive meetings with Zoom. If you have any questions, make sure you just send me an email, make a comment, message me on Facebook, however you want, and I'll answer those. If you have any other videos that you want me to make, just let me know. I'd be more happy to make those and post them on YouTube, which also reminds me, if you could do me a favor by subscribing to this channel and hitting on the bell icon so you're notified when I post new videos. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you soon.